If you have ever experienced a glitch in the Matrix, consider sending it my way by going to asthereavendreams.com and clicking the button to do so. And of course, thank you. Hi, Raven. I would like to share with you the story of my glitching coat cupboard. I'm in England, and I own and live in the bottom flat of a Victorian property. It was built in 1892, and I know that most Americans think that's old, but for us in England, we don't find it that old at all. In fact, the city in which I live comprises very many houses of that age, and older many being built in Georgian times. My house, before it was split into flats, was originally owned by a whole family, and they had servants downstairs in the bit where I now live with my children. I also own a large cellar and have a mezzanine level, where there are two children's bedrooms. The layout means that my flat surrounds the main stairs of the property, which are not in my flat, and as a result, I have some odd twists and turns to the extent that, when I first moved in, it took me nearly a week to work out which way to go when I left the kitchen. As a result, there are some strangely shaped cupboards in the flat, one of which is built into one of the walls outside the kitchen. It's over 8 foot tall, 6 foot wide, but no more than 15 inches deep, so we use it to store all of the family's shoes and coats. If we lived in Edinburgh, it would be known as an Edinburgh Press. About five years ago, my boyfriend and I went to leave the house and go outside the front door when we realized it had started to rain. As he lives in his own house and hadn't brought a coat with him, I said that I would nip back into the flat and see if I could find any coat big enough for him to wear. I ran back in and opened the coat cupboard that I have just described, stuck my hand in to rummage around, and pulled out a navy blue waterproof coat. Bear in mind that there is no light in this cupboard, and we don't keep that many coats in there. I took it back to him thinking that it was one of my son's coats and he put it on. Immediately we saw there was a logo on the front of the coat for the supermarket Aldi. We were both astonished. My son does not own an Aldi coat, nor does anybody else in the house, as none of us have ever worked there. We have absolutely no idea where this coat came from, and we thought for a long time about who had visited the house, and there was nobody who would have left such a coat. We thought it was quite funny at the time, and my daughter later adopted the coat, and wears it to this day. How did that coat get there? I clear out the cupboard on a yearly basis, and it was definitely not there when I last cleared it out. That's not the end of the story, though. Last year, I noticed for the first time behind all the other coats in the cupboard, there was a detachable hood, which had fake fur around it. I kept saying to myself that I had thrown away the coat that it was attached to a couple of years ago and I should really throw away that hood as well because the coat was so scruffy, and there was no use for the hood. I kept seeing that hood every time I opened the cupboard for a few weeks. After a while, I finally got round to thinking about throwing away that hood. It's a simple task, I know. So I pulled out the hood to find it attached to a different coat. It was a black maternity coat from the shop New Look, which is very common here in England, and there's one on every high street. I stopped and thought how on earth this coat could have got there. It was a size 10, which is a small size in England, and still had all its tags attached. We all pondered about where the coat had come from. I phoned my daughter, who no longer lives with us, and she said it definitely wasn't hers. And she did bring a friend around the other day whom we also contacted, and she said it wasn't hers either. None of us is a size 10. I thought so hard about who else had visited and even called my hairdresser, who is a mobile hairdresser, so very conveniently visits me at my house. 
She said it definitely wasn't hers either. I have a friend who works at New Look, and I took a photo of the tags and sent those to him, wondering if he could work out when the coat was made. Sure enough, he said it was from the Autumn Collection in 2021. When I found the coat, it was 2023. It still had all the tags on, and had only just appeared in the back of my coat cupboard. I don't think we will ever know where this coat came from, but it was in perfect condition. So I took it to a charity shop so that someone else who was a size 10 and expecting a baby could make good use of it. There is no spooky vibe about my house at all, and it feels very welcoming and a happy place to be. I just wonder if somebody is sending coats from another dimension to us for no particular reason. But who knows? Hello. I've been reading all of your stories, and I think it's about time that I also share mine. I was honestly shocked when I found this sub. I really didn't think this was as common as it was. Every summer in South Spain, we celebrate Feria, which is like an outdoor party with bars built like boxes with no ceiling. So basically, everybody is around the fairgrounds, drinking, and going in and out to the bars to dance, grab some drinks, etc. It was around 3 a.m., completely nighttime, and me and my friend were outside the bars having a smoke. My friend suggested going in to take a drink and see if we could stay for a bit in that place, or go looking how the others are looking. Now this is when it becomes incredibly weird. My friend and I go inside the bar, all full with people dancing, and I mean the place is packed with people. We speak with the waiter and we order our drinks. We turn around, and the place is empty. We turn around again to the waiter, and they're also not there. No one is. We go outside, all shocked with our fresh drinks in hand, fresh ice, it was clear that the drink was just made at that moment, and not hours ago. We look around, and it's freaking daytime. We look at our phones, and it was 8 a.m. We turn around to the bar, and it's closed. There are workers cleaning the street, no one is around. Every bar was closed. Bear in mind that the bars close at 6, so it wouldn't have made sense that it was later than we thought, because the waiters would still have to clean the place before closing, and literally one second before all this, the bar was full of people and drinks on the floor. My friend remembers everything in the exact same way that I do, and we weren't drunk at all. I'm actually glad that I have a witness to this. Okay, I'm telling this story on behalf of my ex. We're still on good terms as we have three kids together, and I have his permission to share, so here goes. This happened in the early 90s, when he was around 13 years old. He often ditched school, and in Scotland, most towns I know have a wooded area with trails and a bridge or two, usually with a stream running through and, for some reason, are always named the Glen by locals. The woods usually go on for a couple of miles, but nothing vast like a thick forest or anything. He lived close to the woods, and knew them well. So, one afternoon he was just exploring them, while he should have been at school, when he came across what appeared to be an old disused water treatment site. He didn't know at the time that's what it was, but explains it just as you would imagine it would look like. Two huge concrete circular objects, which would have been water tanks, jutting out of the ground, now covered with concrete, with moss growing on top. A few large and now corroded metal pipes coming out of the ground here and there, and a rectangular shaped concrete area on the ground, 
which was probably the basis of buildings and such, scattered over quite a large area. And there was also a small abandoned brick outhouse with no door, which he went into, and within that an old electrics type box with wires that were plain to see and had long been disconnected. He wondered, as he knew the woods so well, why had he never come across this before? So he spent some time exploring the area and just taking it all in before heading home. That night, he spoke to one of his friends who often ditched school with him and asked if he wanted to go to the Glen the next day and he would show him this new cool place he had found and told him all about it. His friend agreed, and the next day off, they went into the woods. Like I said, he knew the area well, so he knew where he had been the day before and where the old waterworks were located, or at least roughly where, except he could not find any trace of it at all. He said at this point that his friend probably thought that he had made it up. As they had hours to spare, they spent a lot of time looking for the area, except it was nowhere to be found. It was as though it just never existed. And like I say, the woods were big and dense in areas, but do not cover that big of an area in reality. He said that he felt really confused and disappointed, and swears a hundred percent that it was there. I mean, it was a cool find, but it's not something worth making up. What young teenager would pretend to find objects that describe an old waterworks? If he was to invent something, it would definitely be something a bit more interesting. <laughs> this memory stuck with him. How one day it was there, with him walking around it all, to the next day it's not existing at all. No traces of it. He'd never seen it before that day, nor did he ever see it again after. When the internet became a thing, he tried googling it to prove he wasn't crazy. Plus, he was interested too except he couldn't find anything about it. No information at all. Like it simply did not exist. He asked his parents about it and some others from the area, and no one ever knew what he was talking about. He didn't know what a waterworks even was back then, nor did he know what a glitch in the Matrix was, but he does now. My dad had a baby ring in 14 karat gold. It was something they used to do way back when. Even grown, my sister and I both wore it occasionally on our little finger as we have small hands. One night, I went downtown to a new little dangerous lounge. I went with my two male coworkers, Ricky and Charlie, and one of those guys drove. I'm female. The area was dangerous but it was a new place, and we met for a Christmas party. We ate greasy little chicken wings and other bar delights, and a spotlight on our area was making my rings go crazy shiny. I took a mental note of what I'd worn and was careful with the napkins and greasy wings with my rings, so I wouldn't lose anything, and I noted two with diamonds, and my dad's baby ring on my little finger. I saw it clearly. Before I left, and I had not been to the bathroom, I saw that my dad's ring was gone. I alerted my friends and we looked under the table, restrooms, though I didn't go there. I had to leave eventually and was so sad, it had completely ruined my night. I prayed every day and night that some way I could find it. I'd lost a girlfriend of mine not long before, and thought surely she was a saint in heaven and sent a little request that she prayed with me for a return of that ring. Time passed. One day I saw a cigar band style initial ring like that one in a jewelry store, so I put it on a long layaway. After I had done this, I had a dream of my friend and she said, before the last layaway payment, you will find your father's ring. It was about six weeks later and it was payday. I paid the second to last payment that day. 
I went over to my sister's house and helped her empty a small closet of way too many shoes and that she wanted none of. So there was no going through them, and I simply threw them into a wide open black trash bag, one after the other, until they were gone. I cinched the bag, and I plopped them into the dumpster. I returned with a wad of wet and dry paper towels and swiped the narrow closet wet again, and then dried it well and threw those towels out. I went to now close the door, and I heard a clink. There sat that ring on the closet floor. It was impossible. I then thought of her words in my dream. Before the last layaway payment, you will find the ring. It was that day, the second to last one. On the last one, I told the jeweler to change the initials to mine, as I had the original back. Hi, Raven. I've always been interested in everything paranormal and creepy. From the time I was little, I was fascinated with ghosts, and could watch any scary movie alone by myself now. Just in the last few years, I learned of glitches in the Matrix and started watching videos. This is how I came onto your channel, and it is by far my favorite. I listen sometimes while driving to work or getting ready for the day. After learning about glitches, I realized my experience would indeed be considered a glitch. I don't want to be too specific in order to protect the privacy of those involved. So, about five years ago, I used to work for a pretty popular franchise restaurant. While there, I developed a pretty close relationship with one of my managers. Let's call her Mary. We became pretty close friends, and we even hung out outside of work. Me and her, and our significant others as well. We even had a friend's Thanksgiving before. I got to know her really well, and she told me all about her family. She told me about her sister and her nieces, Emily and Jade. She talked about taking them shopping and getting their hair done for them. She loved them very much and spent a lot of time with them. I never saw the two nieces in person, but I saw pictures of them, that she showed me of family camping trips, etc. About a year after I left to start work at another place, my friend Mary was in a very serious accident. She suffered brain damage, and has to be taken care of for the rest of her life. I was devastated. I added Mary's sister and family members on social media in order to stay updated on her health. Around six months ago, I noticed a lot of posts from Mary's sister of one of her daughters. Only the one, Emily. She was in sports and about to graduate, so pictures constantly. I thought to myself that she never posts about Jade. I wonder how little Jade is doing. Being nosy, I went to her profile and started looking for anything about Jade. After months and months of going through posts, I could not find one trace of this girl. When I found nothing, I started to feel crazy. I kept searching and looking back, years, but nothing. I went to other family members' posts of birthday parties and cookouts. No picture, no tag, no posts about Jade at all. She doesn't exist. Apparently, Mary's sister only has one daughter, Emily. I feel really confused, and I know what I saw from Mary's pictures in the past. I remember all of the stories about two nieces. I would never ask in order to not be disrespectful, but it's just something I have to accept as reality. As crazy as it is, and I'll never get an answer. So, this happened about a month ago. I work third shift at a hospital, so I have my badge and a Vosera. A Vosera is like a little walkie-talkie you clip up to your scrubs, so you can call other people who work in the same hospital. 
So when I got home from work the next morning, this glitch happened. I put my badge and Vosera on my bathroom counter. I always keep them together, so when I go to put them on, they're both there and I clip them on together. Later in the day, when I had to start getting ready for work, I clipped both on. There's no way I would have just put one on because I need both of them. Now anyone who works in a hospital will tell you it's always freezing, so instead of just wearing my scrub top, I wanted to put on a long sleeve shirt under it so I could stay a little warmer. I go to my bedroom, find the long sleeve shirt, take off my badge and Vosera and set them on my bed to change. But when I go to grab them again, only my Vosera was there. I tore my bedroom apart trying to find my badge. I took off all the blankets, I looked under my bed, I looked literally everywhere and I could not find it. I asked my boyfriend who I live with if he could look around so I could finish getting ready for work. He also could not find my badge. I was getting really frustrated because I had to leave soon and I vividly remembered putting both my badge and my Vosera on my bed. I was convinced it was gone, and I was going to have to pay the $10 to get a new one. I was just about to head to work when I went into my bathroom to grab my jacket, and my badge was sitting on the counter. I know that I didn't forget to put it on with my Vosera, because I always put them on together. Needless to say, I was super glad that I found it, but I was also frustrated that right before I had to go to work, the universe decided to mess with my badge. When I was in the sixth grade, I used to sometimes go with a friend to her house a block from our school after school. I usually waited for my mom to come pick me up, but some days she let me spend a few hours at my friend's house. She had a very large house, probably the biggest one in the neighborhood. I always found certain rooms in her house a bit disconcerting. They gave me strange vibes, but even though my friend insisted she had a haunted attic, I just shrugged it all off. I always found my friend's parents a little strange as well. But, hey, everyone has their quirks. One warm afternoon on a particularly nice day, I asked my friend if I could come over after school. She said sure, and she would walk home and I could meet her there. I sometimes stayed later for extra activities. After getting approval from my mom, I began to walk to her house. Mind you, I've walked there several times. I knew exactly where it was. When I got onto her road, I had to stop and rub my eyes and look around. There, at the end of the road where the large house usually stood, was an empty lot. Her garden was still there and all the trees were there, but the house was completely gone. I began running up this road to make sure that I wasn't fooling myself, and sure enough, in its place was perfectly green grass. It couldn't have been demolished because there would have been a huge mess everywhere. I ran back to school and called my mom. I tried to explain what happened, but she was not understanding, and she eventually picked me up, wondering if I was having an episode. Instead of driving back to check my friend's house status, she drove me home. I immediately called my friend and she picked up as usual, asking where I was. I explained what had happened and she just laughed. She thought I was making a bad excuse not to come over or something, but remember I was the one who wanted to come over. Maybe I had briefly lost my mind. The next day, I insisted on coming over just to see the house, and it was right back where I left it before. Same large house. I wrote it off as haunted and forgot about it until years later, when I heard some glitch in the Matrix stories. I truly believe that I experienced something like that. Mm -hmm. 
I had taken a security officer position for the experience between jobs on a university campus. One building had woods around it, and had formerly been housing for priests who used to be teachers on campus. There was a desk for someone to sit at, a telephone, and then a little waiting room or reception area, and the front of this building had a large wide window, and a glass door that was locked at night. The RA would sit at that 1950s style desk. The room had an old, circa 50s couch and chairs, end table and lamp like some old movie set. It was outside of our time. No one ever sat there. The students entered, then went through a door and into the individual small dorm rooms. This night, I was making rounds, driving the jeep that belonged to the school, and I got a call from a very tearfully flustered RA. I was relatively close by and zoomed to her aid, humming the Mighty Mouse theme song. When I got there in a jiffy, I saw how terrified she was, sobbing, and she couldn't get her story out. The night was quiet, and she'd been in a student's dorm room helping her when she returned to her post at that front office area. She was startled to see an adult woman, dressed in a skirt and blouse who had her hair up in a bun on her head, just sitting on the couch, reading something. She asked if she could help her, and she looked up into the RA's face, and then back down to the book again. She was older than the RA and seemed very sophisticated, so she kind of hesitated to push her. Was it a student's mother, maybe, she wondered? She thought maybe she didn't hear her, so she asked again. This time, she looked up from her book, stood, and then disappeared totally right in front of the RA. She was so shaken, and she was a blubbering mess. I realized that she pretty much came with a 1950s and 60s style furniture, and was some kind of time warp or glitch. Hi Raven, this one is a blast from the past. My parents weren't home one day and I had a couple of friends over, thinking we were super cool. We would smoke cheap cigarettes without inhaling them out my window to keep the smell from ventilating through the house. I was sitting on my bed and I opened the pack to see three, one for all of us. Like I said, we thought we were cool at the time and didn't realize how dumb we actually were. I distinctly remember seeing three individual cigarettes when we heard my mom come home. Nobody had lit their cigarettes, and I told them to hand them back and we'll save them for another time. I put mine back, friend one puts his back, and friend two handed me his but accidentally dropped it in the process. I looked down to see where it went, but it was nowhere to be found. My bed frame goes all the way to the floor so it couldn't have fallen under it. I lifted my mattress to see if it got stuck between it and the frame, but nada. I told my friends to help me look for it, and they said that it must have fallen back into the pack. I opened the pack again, and there were only two cigarettes in it. I show them, and they said, yeah, it fell back into the pack. I said that we each had a cigarette in our hands not one minute ago, and they were adamant that I didn't have one. I argued with them saying yes, I did. Why else would I give out my last cigarettes if I wasn't going to smoke one with you? I was so nervous that my mom would find a loose cigarette in my room at some point, but she never did. To this day, I have no idea what happened. I've known these guys 10 plus years and have brought it up to them a few times again, and each time they are adamant I didn't have one. I remember distinctly holding one with my lips, and I was about to light it when my mom came home. I'm still at a loss almost 15 years later. Does anybody have any theories as to what happened? Hey Raven, I'm a new listener. I like your glitch stories, and I don't know if this is a glitch, but it felt very weird to me. 
I've never had such a weird time just driving about six miles down a road. And so I was delivering a package down this road, and it just kept getting weird. It was a long hallow. First off, there was a small tractor going kind of slow. After about a mile, he turned off, and then I was able to get moving again, and as I came around to bend, there was just a guy in the road, so I had to slow down again. He moved, and I was able to get moving again. Then, after about 50 feet or so, I was coming up a hill, and then there was this long piece of metal in the road. I had to stop and physically remove it because it was a large piece of metal across the entire road. Then I got back into my car and began to drive again, and then turkeys were running across the road. Then as I went further down, an older man started crossing the road. Now, this could have been just the oddest bunch of crap happening at once, I don't know. I remember reading one time that if you're going too fast and too suddenly, like the Matrix didn't expect it, and it will need to slow you down to render it out. I don't know, what do you all think? I'm just reaching. It was weird and felt off. So, I just started watching your Glitch in the Matrix videos last night. Last night being for 2024, I had smoked a decent amount. So, this morning, for 2124, I woke up around 9 or 10, and my parents were leaving to go get breakfast because they had just woken up also. I decided to go with them to get breakfast. We waited outside the restaurant for at least 15 minutes get seated, I then go to wash my hands in the bathroom and then sit back down at our table. I then see through the window at the restaurant one of my friend's trucks go past the restaurant, with a grey car following it. Keep in mind you cannot miss the truck because it's bright yellow with black stripes going down the side. Okay, he's just out driving around today, I said to myself. But then not even 10 minutes later, the same exact truck goes by with the same exact car following it, going the same way they were going before. They were going left from my point of view. I know that the story isn't too wild and that the truck could have just gone around the block, but I had never seen that car that was following it before, and that was what was really weirding me out. I might have just been seeing things, or thinking things, because I still felt a little off from the night before, but this truly confused the hell out of me. So that, my friends, was this week's collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. Stories that are bizarre, strange, weird, and otherwise just odd. Stories that make you think, make you consider reality. What is reality is the question. Is reality what we see, what we feel, what we smell? I smell pizza sometimes, that's reality. I love pizza. Um, my point is, is reality what can be experienced with our five senses? Or is there more to reality than meets the eye? Are our five senses simply our methods of interpreting the data of a simulation? Are they just the input-output, the I.O. systems of our machines that we know as our bodies? Technically, yes. Um, our senses would be the I.O.s, the input-outputs, much like how a keyboard and mouse are I.O. devices as our displays. Um, our fingers, the input is what we feel, it inputs data to our brain, and then the output would be our brain's messages back to our nerves and our hands, telling us to either pull away because something is unpleasant, or that we enjoy the feeling of something, or something like that. Same goes with visuals, smell, hearing, tasting. It's all input-output. It inputs data to your brain, your brain then outputs response data, 
That is how the nervous system works. That's probably the wrong system. I think it's nervous system. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. I have a master's degree, but I don't have a doctorate. And if I did have a doctorate, it wouldn't be in that stuff. It'd be in IT, and that would be silly. I'd be a computer doctor then. A, a data doctor. An IT doctor. Anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed these stories. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button. That would be very pleasant. That would send... Uh, I, I would see the thumbs up button getting hit, which would send that data to my brain, and my brain would then output um, serotonin. I almost said melatonin. I guess I'm just going to go to sleep. My brain would then output this out serotonin, and I'd be happy because, hey, look, people like my videos. Or maybe it would be melatonin, and I would just fall asleep because I'm tired. Who knows? Um, I'm so stupid sometimes. Anyways, uh, like the video. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, consider subscribing. That helps a lot, actually. Uh, you can also scroll down to the comments, and if you see a comment from someone else that isn't inflammatory, is just a nice comment, or even just using the word of the week, which we'll talk about in a minute, consider giving that comment a thumbs up. Spread the love. I appreciate you guys liking the video, but liking other comments can make other people feel nice, too. And it can also help the video more, too. Who's to, who, who knows how that algorithm stuff works? Um, but interactions are important, especially community interactions. So you guys interacting with each other, it actually helps more than you might think, which is so silly, but it's, it's cool. It is what it is. Um, you can also join Patreon and memberships, get early access to content like this or other things, depending on what you sign up and how you sign up for it. You can also do a super thanks, which is just a tip to the channel, which is never, ever expected, but always, always appreciate it. The other thing you can do, since this happens to be a glitch video, is leave a comment with the word of the week. On the screen right now, and a few moments prior to this moment in time, is a collection of every single screenshot that I found with the last week's word of the week on last week's video. Glitch video specifically. If you used the word of the week on that video and I didn't get your screenshot on this screen, feel free to yell at me. I don't know how I missed it. Unless you left the comments Monday morning or afternoon, in which case I may have missed it. As in today. As in the day this video goes live, that afternoon, I may have missed it. You have to put it in the week, like, during that week, like, up to Sunday. Um, and if I missed it, I'm sorry, just yell at me. Um, uh, anyways, thank you to each and every single one of you who left a comment on last week's video using the word of the week, which was ebb. My love for you shall never ebb. It shall always flow. I appreciate you. Yeah. Moving forward from that, this week, the word of the week might be a little more difficult for some of you to use. The word of the week this week is serendipity. Now, serendipity has a handful of definitions to choose from. They're all the same, but I, ha I didn't want to use the Merriam-Webster because it was worded very strangely. So we're just going to use the Cambridge Dictionary this week, which is the fact of finding interesting or valuable things by chance. So, that means if you're trying to think of a comment to leave on this video, perhaps through a moment of serendipity, you shall type something entertaining. That was a really poor use of the word Give it a shot. You guys can do it. I will also accept serendipitous uh, as a word if you want to use that instead. I'm cool with it. Yeah. All that said, friends, hope you're having a beautiful week so far. Hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it. And please don't let anyone tell you otherwise. And until next time, much love and sleep well.